Hi guys, this video is a redo of my last video because I'm an idiot. You know when you sometimes have a bad feeling in the gut of your stomach that something isn't quite right but you just don't pay attention to it? Well I had that with some of the results I was getting. And then this person, who I can't pronounce their name because they're from Russia I believe, they pointed out the problem and I had to agree with it. And then a couple other experts on a Facebook forum I belong to, they also pointed it out and I had to acknowledge that something wasn't right here. So I retested the drivers, found out, yes, there was a problem with my measurements, and I've gone back and redone them and redone the video. Uh, it's mostly the same, I've just slotted in the new information, and now that's what I have to present to you now. So I apologize to Acoustic Elegance for the misinformation that I distributed, and I hope this new video helps uh, with that because it turns out now that the drivers measure equally well and consistent, this is a very good woofer. So pay attention now that the information is right because this is good and you're not going to want to miss it. Okay, here's the drivers. Um, they have been open previously and checked out and even played and broken in. Uh, and then they've been sitting on the shelf for a little while, but this is the packaging how they um, are shipped directly from Acoustic Elegance. They're uh, fitted with some styrofoam blocks to keep everything tight inside the box and then a plastic wrap around the driver itself. Nothing too impressive here, but everything's snug and tight. Um, I have seen better from Pro Audi drivers, but this is what I would consider good enough. They got here safe and they've been safe for a long time. Here's some nice beauty shots of the drivers. I'm not a big fan of spring terminals, which that's what came on these. Um, but, hey, they do the job. Can't complain. The baskets are very nice, well ventilated. Uh, you can see the spider inside of the ventilation holes there. The basket is very open and airy. Here's the uh, phase plug that these drivers are well known for. Very sharp looking. I have the black phase plugs, which I personally think look better than the bare aluminum phase plugs. The surround is very nice and straight and glued on very well. And I have the rubber gasket on one and not the other, just to show you the difference. I'm mounting them without the gasket. Overall, a nice looking driver, lots of ventilation good sturdy tensile leads everything is glued nicely and fitted very well high quality product you can tell just by looking at it I'm gonna label these sample one and sample two so I don't mix them up and then I mounted them here in the cab before I totally finished the cab the baffles weren't painted yet in case I scuffed them or anything like that now I mentioned at the start of this video I kind of screwed things up. You can see in this shot here that I did use insulation as my stuffing which is my stuffing of choice. Um, the other one I believe I used polyfill. Woo! That is a tight fit. Holy. I then took impedance measurements and as mentioned my first go around with this video these measurements one of these cabs did not measure properly. But since then, I have gone back and taken the measurements again. And I got results that were much more realistic uh, because everything was in place, insulation, stuffing, everything tight and bolted down, secured. So here we have the results, the new results of the most recent tests. And you can see things are very closely matched. We have a tuning frequency of about 32 hertz. This is the saddle in between the two impedance peaks. And I'll talk about that more when we look at the ground plane measurement. That's very low tuning for this driver. Both drivers match very well. Um, there is a little bit of difference in around 150 hertz. And this is where I saw a big difference last time. But now that the cabs are properly stuffed, the difference qu isn't quite as much. This still could be a difference caused by the cabs. There might be an internal reflection of some kind in there that's just creating a little bit of difference. But overall, these drivers are very well matched. And also of note is the impedance minimum of 10 ohms. This is very important when we talk about how efficient the driver is because when I do the frequency response, we'll see the output that the driver provides. And that is at a 10 ohm load 
versus most drivers have an impedance minimum of say six and a half or seven ohms and if it's a four ohm driver even lower as low as three ohms so when we look at the output of this driver we got to keep in mind that this driver is putting out very high SPL with a 10 ohm impedance so what do you want me to do stand there and laugh when I fall if you fall I'm not gonna be laughing I'm gonna be crying with you Okay, so I took these massive speakers outside to get frequency response measurements and some of you will say, why did you bother doing that? You could have done ground plane measurements or some other technique. Personally, this is how I feel you get the best results. It's uh, as close to anechoic as you can get. I'm running at this falls off because I'm going to be able to take this. I was very nervous this whole time and I was happy to be able to take the driver down. But then up goes number two. Despite having measured both drivers outside, I'm only showing you sample number one because sample number two did have that discrepancy I mentioned earlier because of perhaps the stuffing in the cabinet or whatever went wrong there. So anyways, let's look at sample number one here. We can see excellent output of like 95 dB plus. And again, just reminding you that this is kind of a 10 ohm load I know that's not really how we normally think of things but uh, very high sensitivity here uh, with a high impedance makes for a very efficient driver we have a smooth response all the way out past a thousand Hertz and then the breakup zone uh, which I guess would be about 1300 Hertz and up just looking at this one graph is rather consistent and will stay out of your way in the crossover and happily bend into shape uh, so overall we have a very nice consistent and smooth response to work with here now that was just one driver but I think it's important to look at the consistency between two samples because I botched it outside I took both uh, I remeasured both drivers but I did it in my shop despite this we can see both frequency responses are very close very consistent and they match very well there's there's nothing to complain about here I then did a ground plane measurement okay so now we're kind of looking below 100 Hertz because my ladder and shop measurements uh, were really only good above 100 Hertz so we can see we get a pretty good output down to about 50 Hertz and then we get kind of a roll off and then a bump again where the port tuning really kicks in about 30 hertz we get that bump now this driver really isn't meant to be high output down around 30 hertz that was never the intention of this driver so I kind of tuned it a little too low and I'll probably pull out those ports chop them down a little bit to raise that tuning up closer to 40 hertz which is completely uh, satisfactory in my opinion 40 hertz is perfect exactly where I want to be for this driver because this driver has a lot of surface area and a pretty decent X max, this thing is actually going to put a, a lot of output all the way down to 30 hertz. This is a base response that most people could happily live with, especially if your room has a lot of reinforcement around 40 hertz, which mine actually happens to have. So I'll do some listening. It may actually be that I don't change the port tuning at all depending on how it matches with the room because this may work out very well for me personally. And this is what this driver is all about. The off-axis response of this driver is very good and the point of this speaker, this driver, in my mind is to have that consistent directivity to match up with a horn or a large format mid-range of some kind to get smooth off-axis response but also directivity so that you don't have this omnidirectional sound bouncing around your room. For such a large 15 inch driver I'm very impressed to see that even above 1500 Hertz although we do get some deviation things are still very consistent. It's not till above 3000 Hertz or thereabouts that things start to go a little haywire. But I gotta say, this is very impressive and you'll be able to cross over to some very interesting drivers because things are so consistent and smooth. Okay, uh, then I took some me distortion measurements. 
Normally I'm not so into distortion measurements and I don't like to really get into them on this channel because I think they're widely misinterpreted and misunderstood, but I'll just take a moment to quickly comment on them. This is the cumulative spectral decay. Um, overall, this uh, may look a little dicey, but we are talking about a woofer uh, that is meant to play below about a thousand hertz. And so all that stuff above a thousand hertz really should be filtered out. And below that, we're dealing with long wavelengths. And if you look at my Z-axis scale, we're talking about three milliseconds here. So if you try to compare to other CSD graphs, you have to look at all the axes and really understand what you're looking at. Ultimately, I would say this is actually a very good result. And next was harmonic distortion. This is the 60 hertz response. And you're still getting some port influence, which is probably helping here. But look at this. This is where the big woofer area is really helping. We're talking, you know, 35 dB down for second order. Here we are at 80 hertz, 40 dB down or so. And third and fourth and fifth order are even lower. This is, for these low frequencies, this is very good harmonic distortion. Here again, 40, 40 dB down, 60 dB down for third order distortion at 100 hertz. Very, very remarkable in my opinion. 200 hertz, you can see third order and fourth order distortion just way down in the floor. Very, very good. And this is 400 hertz. Distortion is just simply put a non-issue here. Oh, and I will mention this was done at 92 dB uh, at one meter, and then the microphone was moved closer. Here's just the, uh, rather than looking at the single frequencies, uh, this is the overall, I did from 100 to 2000, 100 hertz to 2000 hertz, and it's just uh, kind of looks at the whole grouping of the harmonic distortion. The last thing I did here was I took my driver files, which are available for you to download and you can play around with as well and I just messed about with a second order crossover. Uh, the driver response is so smooth that this is really all this driver needs provided that matches up with the, the driver you want to match it with, the tweeter or mid. The one thing that caught me out is because impedance is so high, again that 10 ohm minimum, that it just kind of um, caught me off guard and my kind of typical range of values wasn't really working for me at first. Because it's high impedance, it needs a large inductor and smaller capacitor. That can make for a bit of an expensive crossover. Those big inductors can get quite pricey. And there it is. There is the TD-15M from Acoustic Elegance. Pretty solid performer. A lot of money, but uh, overall, yeah, if, if you got the money and you want constant directivity, this one should be on your list. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the review. Uh, I hope this helps you make a decision if you're thinking of this kind of woofer. And uh, please let me know your thoughts on it. Comment below. Also subscribe to this channel. Share this channel. Share this video. Hopefully this is a popular video. It's a driver that a lot of people are interested in. So share it around on Facebook and things like that. It really helps me out. People get watching the channel and stuff like that. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.